Hello everybody, hope you've done okay and hope you're having a good Christmas break. Is it any different from normal? We're still stuck inside but I have managed to get outside for a few runs. But I've got to do today is have a look at Cadence. Now Cadence is often cited as the magic 180 figure. Now doing some research that stemmed back from a study by Jack Daniels looking at elite athletes in the 94 Olympics when he observed that no one of the, none of the track athletes had a cadence below 180. So the 180 is not really some magic number. And I was uh, struck by watching Martin Hare here in the end of the marathon project, marathon race in the States in Arizona the other day, how slow a cadence he had. So let's have a quick look at him in action now. So here is Martin Hare here at the end of the marathon project race in America last weekend. And uh, just amazing his stride here. It just feels like he's just sort of bouncing off the ground. I can't believe it. A cadence I worked out as 162 steps per minute. I don't think I could have a cadence that low even though I was sort of just doing a slow jog. It's just incredible. And here he comes to the line, almost sort of straining every sinew, but very effective, 2.8.59, can't argue with that. So in contrast, here is Elliot Kupchogi in the Sub 2 project doing his 1.59, 40.2. And the cadence I worked out here is 1.86. It just looks so smooth, doesn't it? It's incredibly the speed that he's going at. I mean, not to say that here here wasn't going fast, but this is next level. And just so, such a smooth style. And here is Bridget Koskai in the 2019 Chicago Marathon when she broke the world record of 2.14.04. And the cadence here I worked out is 190. So it wouldn't be a Tim Gross analysis video without a customary spreadsheet. So sure enough, here it is. So what I've done is I've looked on Strava to see if I can find some elite athletes as well as the ones you've already seen to see what their cadence were in their marathons. So most of these came from Strava rather than some video analysis of Bridget Koskai and Elliot Kipchoge. So I've ordered them in this view by lowest cadence first. So the lowest cadence by far is Martin Hare here at 162 there I worked out. And his Strava suggests he sort of goes around about mid 160s quite a lot of the time. So I think he may have been tired there but certainly his cadence is definitely in the mid to low 160s most of the time. So the next slowest cadence is Paul Martelletti, a recent M40 prolific uh, racer in all sorts of um, distances and indeed a former club mate of mine. I did a 1500 with him once when he was only just a stride ahead. <laughs> I'm a bit closer at 1500 than I am marathon for sure. But interesting that he has quite a slow cadence, a 169. Everyone else then is sort of quite a big range. So definitely you could see some of the elite British marathon runners, Ben O'Connor there at 175 in the London Marathon. And a few other guys just under around at 180. Uh, Jack Rayner from Australia there, 188 with 211. Johnny Muller, another New Balance athlete, uh, as well as Ben Connor. He has a bit higher cadence, 188 there in last year's London. And then we go into the women. It does seem that the women have a slightly higher cadence. Um, Bridget Koskai there in the world record I saw at 190. Tish Jones, 188 there. And some other women sort of in the low 190s going all the way up to the very highest cadence is Alison Dixon with the cadence of 208 according to Estrava in the London 2017 race. I think you just have to watch her. She does have an incredibly quick turnover. And also Lily Partridge there is up at 200. But interestingly Aaron Scott who's a Pretty much an elite um, British runner. He has a very high cadence for for a man. He's got a cadence there of 196, as does Andrew Davis, who's now the M40 British record holder, taken over of my friend Steve Way. Uh, his cadence is also very high at 196. So also for for a laugh, I put on <laughs> Tim Gross GBR. My cadence in Seville there was 183 for my 256. I always think my cadence is quite high, but uh, looking at that, it's maybe not as um, high as I thought it was. And in contrast, Joshua Chepter guy, who, who actually posted his 5,000 meter world record on Strava, interestingly has a cadence of only 190, a pretty much four minute mile pace. And that's interesting, a 146.15 marathon pace. So I think if he did the marathon, his cadence would probably be in the mid 180s, a bit like me. So at least I've got the right sort of cadence. And I also put what cadence I get when I do these sort of times. So the nearest equivalent I could have to a sub two was when I did my 218, 800 earlier this year, which is actually a 201 pace. And I got 197 cadence there. So I needed to <laughs> move my legs somewhat quicker than Elip Kuchugi does to, to even for two minutes. 
And then if we could scroll down, I did a mile time trial there, which is about equivalent to a 2.22 marathon. And I do that at 1.88 cadence. And then a bit slower, my 3K and 5K races and time trials, they were done at 1.85 this year, which would bring me home around about the sort of the 2.30 mark. So I think what's interesting here that, you know, the averages, I did, I did the male averages there um, for the median and mean. So just over 180, about 182. So if you if you did it like a bit like um, Jack Daniels, if you take a mean of all these cadences, well, yeah, you do get a figure of 180. But as you can see there in the men, we've got a range going from 162 up to 196. The women do seem to have a bit higher cadence. That's probably because they're obviously a bit shorter, need to move the legs a bit quicker to maintain the speed. I couldn't actually find an obvious woman of elite standard who had a cadence below 180. I'm sure there are some, but uh, it's quite difficult to find Strava profiles of all these athletes, or at least it was in the time I took to research this video. But you can see there, they're the female cadence for their sort of 2.30ish times, um, you know, two, two, well, 2.14 to 2.30, is around about 10 steps per minute higher than the men, around about 192 to 195. So I think what we could take from this is that there isn't really an ideal cadence, is it? I mean, you've got guys running 28 with a cadence of 162, and you've also got men running, you know, pretty much elite times with a cadence of 196. And of course, the very best times of all, Elliot Kipchoge there with a cadence of 186, and on the women's side, Bridget Costco of 190. So I think if your cadence is around about sort of the, you know, anywhere in those range, you aren't going wrong. What I would say, looking at the side on profiles, that Martin here, here did seem to be overstriding. And interestingly, Bridget Koska is actually a hill striker, um, whereas Elip Kuchogi looks like a more sort of textbook sort of midfoot landing runner. Um, so it does also show that it takes all sorts of styles to, to achieve the, these times. So what, what is your cadence in a marathon and other races? Is it stuck up to any of these sort of t um, cadences? I'm interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So I hope you found this interesting and look forward to seeing the next one then. Okay, bye.